What part does food play in your life? You may have never thought about this, but for most people, there's two main camps when it comes to how they think about food. There are people who eat to live. Now, those people see food as just something they need to survive. What they eat isn't as important as just they need to eat. They know they do. So here, let me eat this and let me move on with my life. And then there's other people. Those people live to eat. They see food as an experience. It's more than something that just fuels their body. It's something to enjoy. They're passionate about food. They really get into it in every way. Now, is one of these better than the other? Well, not really. Every person is an individual and every person has different preferences. Neither one is right nor wrong. We just need to recognize that that's, that's how most people are. But no matter which one you are, there's a few realities we have to face. One of the realities is food is necessary to live. You've got to eat. I mean, you could try to do an intravenous food thing, but it's usually not going to go well. We were created to eat. We enjoy it as part of it. And there are many different types of food out there. You go to every culture around the world, they have different foods, different things they enjoy. But food is also a big part of many men's struggle when it comes to their weight. And it can be the biggest source of the problem by itself. And on today's show, we're going to be talking about the part that food plays in our weight battle as men, how it contributes and what we can do about it. So let's jump in. Welcome to the Confident Man Podcast, empowering men with the confidence they need to live their adventure. Now, here is your host, David Maxwell. Hey guys, welcome to the Confident Man Podcast. I'm so glad that you joined me here today and that you want to be a better man. So before I jump into the topic, I want to tell you what's coming up. In just a few weeks, the Confident Man Podcast we'll be switching to the Thriving Man podcast. And this is just kind of the beginning of some changes that we're making because we want to go to the next level as a place that helps men. We want to help men in more ways than we can even imagine. And we feel like the Thriving Man is a way to do that. My son is going to be joining me. He'll be joining me here on the podcast. The podcast name is going to change. We're going to have a brand new website, a brand new look everything to help you be a better man. We're also going to offer some things we haven't offered before. We're going to offer some one-on-one -on -one coaching capabilities. We're going to build up some digital curriculum and things that are going to help you develop as a man and be better. Because we really believe that success is something that's inside out in us as men. And what we want to do is empower you to live a life you can be proud of. So look for it in just a few weeks. The Confident Man will become the Thriving Man. Everything should be fine on the podcast. You'll keep, stay subscribed. The name is just going to change. All the old podcasts will be here, but we'll have some brand new content. We've got a brand new studio we're building so we can do the podcast together so we can have more content for you. I'm excited about it, as you can tell, and I can't wait for you to join. And let's see where it goes. Let's see what kind of adventure we can have as we grow as men. Now, we're going to talk about food today, but I want to start off with a little bit different question. What kind of a vacation person are you? And you may say, that's kind of a weird question. Aren't we talking about food today? But bear with me. I want you to think about what kind of vacation person are you? Do you go on really active vacations? Do you go on vacations where you just sit at the beach and do nothing? For me, I am a foodie when I go out. I'm a, I'm a foodie pretty much all the time, but I love going on food ventures. And what that means is I love to go to different cultures and try new foods. I love trying stuff I never would have tried before, seeing what's something that they enjoy, going to the hole in the wall places. I like going to the restaurants that aren't the chains. I like to go to the place where everybody there goes. Uh, when I was in New England one time, I was up in Maine with my wife early in our marriage, and we found this like trailer hole in the wall that served crab rolls, and they were some of the best things I'd ever eaten in my life. And it was one of those you wouldn't have known. We were just driving down the road and saw it and said, let's try that. And it was incredible. A few months ago, I went to South Korea to visit with my daughter. And it was literally a food tour because she's the same way I am. And I was there to pay for all the meals. So she took me to all kinds of places. We even went to this one underground restaurant. It literally was underground. It was this little mall area underground. They had a bunch of restaurants, like a food court. And this restaurant was hilarious because it was a couple grandmas working there. And they didn't care how they treated you. They weren't very nice. They weren't very courteous, but they knew their food was good. And guess what? 
It was. So we ate it. I didn't care how they treated me. Just give me the food. That's what I'm there for. Now, food is a part of life, and food is something we all have to eat. We have to eat to live. The problem with food is the reality that so many men face today. A lot of men are obese, and obesity is when you have 30% body fat or higher. And it's very easy to get there, and a lot of people don't even realize they would be considered obese. They think to themselves, I'm not that bad, like I said in last week's show, but they're really technically obese. In fact, 75% of men over 40 in the United States are obese. So it's a huge problem we have. And the truth that we have to face in that is that food, what we eat, is a big part of that. I had to come to that understanding. When I was younger, I had to get my weight under control. And one of my biggest issues, I just ate too much. I ate a lot. I didn't need to eat that much, but I kept eating. And what happened? I got bigger and bigger. And I think a lot of us are in that boat today. So what we're going to look at is the part that food plays in our fatness. And I want us to have a balanced approach with this because there's a lot of crazy theories and stuff. I mean, you could go on YouTube for days and watch videos of people giving their opinions about this or that or the other. And what I think we need to do as men is take a balanced approach. Don't get weird. Don't get crazy because a lot of that stuff is just plain wrong. So what we're going to look at is the food did it and how we blame the food, uh, the art of self-control, and that really is an important aspect of it. And then we're going to look at the food quality focus and how our focus on quality can help us have a better diet. The first thing we want to talk about is the food did it. And you say, what do you mean by that? Well, one of the easiest things to do when we gain weight as men is to blame. Of course, we don't blame ourselves. We're always blaming other things or other people because we think in our mind, I'm not that bad. But we love to blame. And we always look for culprits that are outside of us. And a lot of times, the thing we blame is the food. We blame the food for our fat problem. We just do. We say, well, there's too much sugar in food. There's too much fat in food. There's too many seed oils in food. Uh, there's too many carbs out there. Bread is terrible. Meat is terrible. Processed food is terrible. And so we just go on and on and we're blaming and blaming. And that's very easy, but it doesn't help. There's a couple things that we have to understand when it comes to the thinking about our food. And one of the biggest things, we have to quit blaming the food. It's not the food's fault. Our obesity problem has been growing over the last 40 years in a huge way. But the amazing thing is, if you look at it, our food options have increased over that time too. We have more diet food, more specialized food than we've ever had. We've gone through all kinds of fads and specials. And when it comes to eating, there's no lack of information and things to help you. I mean, there's diet clubs out there you can join who will send you food and you only eat their food and they guarantee you'll lose weight. There's all kinds of options. We've got the diet food. We've got the sugar-free food. We've got the, the keto food. No matter what diet you are on, there's special food just for you. The problem is we're still getting bigger. We're still getting fatter. Stores have more options than ever. The internet has more information than ever, but we're still gaining weight. That's a problem. And we can't blame the food for that. Food doesn't force its way into our mouth. The bag of cookies in the kitchen don't jump out and run when you're watching TV and cram themselves into your mouth. You go get them. We don't need to blame the food, but we've got to change our way of thinking when it comes to the food. We've got to look at losing weight many times for most of us is about the food. We can exercise all we want. People sometimes exercise only so they say, so I can eat more. I used to give that attitude, but it doesn't really work. You can't out-exercise your diet. You just can't. First person I heard say that was Jeff Cavalier on Athlean X, and it's so true. You can exercise a ton, but if you eat a ton, it's not going to matter. You're still going to gain weight, and that's not the food's fault. We just have to look at the fact of what we eat, it matters. And specifically, how much do you eat? How much of it do we eat? If we want to win the battle against obesity as men, we've got to quit blaming the food 
And we've got to look at the fact that, hey, what I eat, how much I eat, those choices matter. And we've got to believe that it's not the food's fault. And we don't have to try to make the food behave. That's my problem with a lot of the diet food out there is what we're doing is we're saying, okay, I'm going to make the food behave. I'm going to make the food change so I can continue to eat or drink more of it. And so we have this whole diet food culture out there, but we're still gaining weight. We're still going up as a nation. There's low calorie, low fat and all that. But what a lot of people do is when they see that, they think, oh, I can eat a ton of it. It's low calorie. I can drink a ton of it. You know, I've seen people when they get on keto and they think, well, I can eat all the meat I want. So they're eating, you know, up to 10 pounds of meat a day, which is just not sustainable in the long term. So even if they do lose weight doing that, eventually they're going to gain it back because you don't want to eat all of that all the time. And a lot of times when we're eating diet food or the specialty food, we think it's a license to eat all we want. So we lose all self-control. And then we blame the food. Well, it's the food's fault. Our obesity issue as men, it's not the food's fault. It's not the restaurant's fault. You know, the buffet restaurant doesn't make you come in there and pay them to eat. We still choose to do it. It's not Coke or Pepsi's fault. You know, people talk about, oh, the sugary drinks, the sugary drinks, the sugary drinks. They're in bottles. They're at the store. You don't have to buy them. You don't have to drink them. We have to look at the reality of what's happening with our weight issue. We have to look at who to blame. And the way to do that is to look in the mirror because the main culprit in our weight gain as men is us. The second thing we want to talk about is the art of self-control. Now, self-control is not a popular topic to talk about when it comes to losing weight. A lot of people are like, oh, self-control, you're just saying that word, but you don't know how hard it is. It is hard. That's the point. And that's why so many people don't want to do it. They don't want to try it. And what a lot of guys do is they want to find the secret. So they go searching for what's the secret of weight loss? What's the secret of getting shredded? What kind of pill can I take to make the weight just fall off me? And that's been that way for all of history. I remember when I was a kid, this craze came out about grapefruits because I think there was a study done that grapefruits actually burn more calories than you eat or something like that. I don't know the whole story behind it. I just remember the commercials. There were commercials of people talking about how taking this grapefruit pill actually helped them lose weight. And there was some guy who like took a grapefruit and squeezed it on the TV and said, you can't eat all of these, but if you take this, you know, and of course he's shredded. And, and that's the whole thing. We want the quick fix. We want to take a pill and just watch our weight fall off. But you know what? It doesn't work that way. There is no quick fix. And the problem is, even if you do the quick fix, it usually doesn't last. There are a lot of men who do the weight yo-yoing. They'll gain weight and then they'll do some crazy diet or whatever, then they lose weight. But then they gain it back, only to lose it again, then gain it back. And almost all the time when they gain, they gain a little bit more or they get, keep going up or eventually they just get demoralized and they think, you know, people just need to accept me the way I am, which means they're quitting. And why is that? Because they're doing the yo-yo diet. They're going up and down and up and down and up and down. And so not really learning the art of self-control. And the truth is eating better and eating less is the key for most men. If most men will start taking the time to eat better and to eat less, they're going to lose weight. They're going to be in that area they want to be. You say, well, well, what if I want to gain muscle and I want to do this? Okay, you can do all that. But you have to be focused on that, and that takes self-control too. No matter what you want your body to look like, if you want to gain muscle, if you want to lose fat, no matter what you want to do, it only happens through self-control. There's no magic formula. You can take all the protein shakes in the world you want, but if you don't get really serious about your diet and what you're doing, what you're eating, how much of it you're eating, and all of those things – you're not going to lose the weight you want to lose. You're not going to look like you want to look. And we have to understand that a lot of us just don't need as much as we eat. That's why we have an obesity problem. 
we're obese because we eat too much. It just is. You say, well, I'm obese because of this, that, and the other. There's a few out there who have medical con conditions. But for the majority of us as men, we've got to look at what we eat and how much of it we eat. We just do. Which means we have to become intentional about our eating. A lot of people think that when you want to lose weight, you have to just not think about food. And it's actually the opposite. You actually become more focused on your food because you want to become more intentional. You have to think about your food. You have to think about what you're eating, when you're going to eat it, how much of it you're going to eat. You have to do all of this if you really want to bring self-control into your eating. If you want to eat better, you've got to make the food. You've got to do this. All of these things happen when you bring self-control and intentionality to your eating. And a lot of men don't do that. A lot of men just don't think about it. They say, you know, Dave, I'm busy. I don't have time to think about all my food. I understand that it's hard, but then don't complain when you gain weight. Don't complain when things just happen and you're not in the shape you want to be in because you're obese. It's just the way it is. When you don't think about food, that's when you start just snacking randomly. You just, I'm hungry. So you grab a bag of chips, a big bag, and you eat the whole thing. You say, well, I was hungry. I needed the food right then. When you don't plan your meals, it's so easy just to go through a drive through And a lot of the drive through meals that we get have as much calories as you could eat in a whole day in one meal. And we wonder why we're obese. A lot of people, they say, well, I'm just going to skip a meal. I'm too busy. I just skip a meal. But the danger of that is the next meal you eat or the next time you feel hungry, you're so hungry that you overeat or you eat just whatever's around you and a lot of it's not healthy. A lot of men also eat emotionally when they're stressed, when they're lonely, when they're tired, when they're angry, whatever. Food becomes their go-to thing. And what we want to do is learn to bring purpose to our eating which means you have to think it out. You have to plan it out. And this helps you in a lot of ways. You eat better. You actually usually have better tasting food. And a lot of times you save a lot of money. But we've got to understand that if we really want to get our weight under control, we don't think of food less. We think of food more. We plan what we're going to eat. We get more focused on how we're going to eat, when we're going to eat. I'm not saying the food controls us. We control the food but you'd rather control food that's better for you. When men don't think about their food, they usually make bad choices. The other thing we want to understand is that we don't have to eat everything. You may have been one of those when you were young, your parents made you clean your plate. So you kind of have that feeling, I've got to eat everything. You can throw food away. People say, well, what about starving people? Well, we're not starving here. We have an obese problem. It's okay if we throw food away. We don't have to eat it all. We don't have to eat the entire buffet. You're not going to be able to. You can go in there hungry, starving, and think, I'm going to eat this buffet down. Very rarely will you win that. There's a few people who do, but even then, they usually are bigger. It's just the way it is. You don't have to fill up your plate. You can leave space on your plate. You don't have to pile it up. Have you ever been to a buffet or to a, a church social and you see people who have an ability to have like three layers on their plate? I don't know how they do it. What we want to do is understand that we can enjoy food, but we don't have to try to eat all the food. And these are all aspects of self-control. And we understand that our weight issues are usually centered around our own self-control. When we understand that, when we walk in that, it actually empowers us. And we see, I can do something about my weight. I can do something about my obesity issue. I don't have to sit around and wait for someone else to solve it. I can solve the problem by bringing more self-control into my life. Now understand, this is slower than a quick diet. It just is. You can do some crazy diet where you eat dirt and a quarter of a Snickers bar every day. And you say, well, I'm going to lose weight that way. You may, but you're not going to keep it off. When you begin to change your habits, incorporate more self-control in your life, think about what you eat, think about how much you eat, you're going to lose weight. It will be slower, but you're going to build new habits, and those habits are going to help you keep the weight off. And I think that's something all of us want to do as men. Now, if you want to look at where do I start, look at last week's show, 
episode 163, I talked about just getting under 30% BMI. If you don't know how to figure out your body mass index, there's a formula I put in the show notes of episode 163. You can check it out. But the benefit of growing stronger in self-control is not only will you get better control of your weight, but you'll bring that same self-control into every area of your life and you'll live better as a man. The third thing we want to talk about is the food quality focus. What I mean is we need to focus ourselves on the quality of our food. What are we eating? There was a saying when I was a kid, you are what you eat. And there's a lot of truth to that. And a lot of us are what we eat right now. And we're seeing that that's a problem in the U.S. for most men. And if we're going to take our weight seriously, if we're going to battle our obesity, we've got to look at what we eat. And I know some guys, I am too busy. I don't have time to think about it. I just eat whatever. Well, it's like anything new. It's going to take some time to make this a part of your life, but you'll get better and better at it. At first, you'll have to feel like, oh, all I do is think about food. But eventually, you'll get good habits to where it becomes easier and easier for you to eat healthily. So what we want to do is look at a few guidelines, a few things we can look at. One is we want to look at some quality food truth. Now, a lot of people think, well, what is quality food? Is it like eating lettuce and dirt? No, it's actually the opposite. When you want to look at eating the right kind of food, you want to look at eating real food and less prepackaged stuff. I know prepackaged stuff is convenient. I know it's easy to grab and go, but most prepackaged food is filled up with stuff that you just don't want. And I'm not saying you have to get into the whole organic thing, you have to eat everything organic, because I think a lot of people use the organic thing as kind of an ad, kind of a fad that people get into. I'm just saying eat real food. Make things yourself. Do things to make food yourself. You're going to eat a better quality food. You're going to enjoy food more. And there's a couple of benefits when you focus on eating real food. When you make it yourself, you kind of lose that taste for junk food. If you go to the convenience store and get like a cinnamon roll, they're okay. But if you go to grandma's house and she makes you homemade cinnamon rolls, which one's better? Well, we know which one's better. It's going to be the one grandma made every time. And when you eat the real thing, you get satisfied because you enjoy the taste. It's something that's powerful. I read a book once called Crave. One of the things they talked about in the book that I thought was fascinating is people who are specialized dietitians and they work with severely obese people. One of the things they do is they teach them to enjoy something real. So one of the things they do to help them understand that is they give them a Belgian chocolate. And this is like Belgian fine chocolate, very expensive, but they give them one. And they said, we want you to eat this and think about how much you enjoy it. And it's amazing because what they do is they're retraining their palate to think about the quality of their food, not just the amount of the food. So they learn that one chocolate can satisfy you more than a whole bag of Oreo cookies. And that's the thing we have to look at when we're eating the real thing. It just satisfies us more. It makes it where, hey, I enjoy this. This is what I want. Now, the other truth we have to look at with that is quality food takes work. If you move into eating more quality food, it's just going to take more work. Preparing food yourself does take some more work. But what you have to do is look at it as this is an investment of time into myself. This is me taking control, being empowered as a man over my eating. And we all need to do that. Now, there's things you can do when you make the food yourself. Make it fun. Listen to music. Listen to a book. You can do two things at once a lot of times when you cook. Now, some men will say, well, I can't cook. Yeah, you can cook. Anybody can cook if they can read. That's what recipes are for. They tell you what to do. Now, you may have to start out with simple recipes. And I'm not saying you're going to be Gordon Ramsay, the chef, but you can cook. And if you start cooking yourself, you're going to enjoy the taste of your food a whole lot more because it's going to be better quality food. And what you want to do is make meals yourself and you'll find that you enjoy it so much you eat out less. When you eat out less, 
you're going to have a lot less calories, you're going to eat a better quality food, and you're going to save money. I mean, who doesn't like that scenario? You want to make eating out something special you do once in a while, not something you do every day. I think one of the biggest reasons so many of us battle obesity is because we just eat out all the time. When you eat out, you tend to eat more. You just do. The, the servings are huge. So we all have to be careful. And what you want to do when you're eating quality food is find the healthy stuff you like and lean into it and say, hey, I'm going to eat more of this. I'm going to food prep this. One of the things we've done recently is I got this cookbook. It was a PDF cookbook from this guy online. And he's done this whole meal prep cookbook where you make the meals and then you put them into individual containers. Each one's about 500 calories. It's a high protein, very good quality food, a lot of good stuff in it. And you know, this is a good meal. And you make it, you'll make about six meals out of it. You throw them in the freezer so they're always there. And it's been really amazing discovering new taste, new meals. He's got a whole listing of these healthy burritos you can eat. And so I'll make a bunch of them, throw them in the freezer. And I got lunches for weeks now because I've got the burritos in there. Each one has a different flavor. So it's not just the same thing over and over again. And you've got all your macros in it. You know how much protein you're doing, how many carbs you're doing, how much fat you're doing, because he's done all that work for you. There's things like that out there. Now, I still have to cook the food, but I like cooking and getting multiple meals out of it because it really saves me time and I'm eating better quality food. And what you want to do is experiment. Learn yourself. Learn what works for you. The reason there's so many diets out there is not because one diet works for everybody. It's that everybody's different. You want to find what works for you. You want to find what quality foods do I like? What do I do with that? How do I do that? And you want to find how it fits you so you can have long-term success. The other thing you want to do is find out what's a quality food goal for you. The goal is to learn to eat healthier and for the long term. Diets train us to crash, to binge, to eat a lot, to eat a little, and then eat a lot, and then eat a little. And we get into this yo-yo cycle. And what you want to do is find that healthy stuff that you like and that you can add to your diet. Experiment with things you haven't tried in a while. You never know. Something you hated 10 years ago, you may like now. Look for new ways to eat things, to incorporate into your diet and add them in. I'm not a big fan of spinach by itself. It's just, it's hard to eat it when it's just cooked by itself. You may love it. That's great. It's just not my thing. But I love spinach and stuff. I just made a Thai chicken curry the other day that had spinach in it. It was great. And I like the fact that I had spinach in there. It tasted great. It was part of the meal, but I'm getting something a little bit healthier in my diet. And those are the things you can discover and find out for yourself. What do I like? Because the goal is to find long-term eating you can do. And what you don't want to do is get into some strange diet where for six months you eat, you know, cardboard meals that somebody sends you and then you stop and you go all the way back to your old eating habits. Because what's going to happen? You're just going to gain the weight again. And nobody wants to do that. And the last thing is you want to be a quality food snob. Now, I'm not saying you should be a snob. Okay, don't be a snob. But if something's not good, you don't have to eat it. You want to get to the point where you have a little bit more discrimination in your taste buds. Oh, I just eat whatever. Why? Why not find stuff you like and train your taste buds that if something just tastes okay, you don't have to eat it. Like we said earlier, you can throw stuff away. Why eat something if it's just not that good? And that's what we want to do is learn to go, hey, this isn't that good. I'm just not going to eat it. And one thing we can do is if we make stuff ourselves, we eat at home more. We find the stuff we like at home, we're less tempted when we go out because we know, hey, I've got some really good stuff at the house I can eat. Like I've got a snack I started doing. I have a Whirly Pop popcorn machine. You make it on the stovetop and you can basically make your own popcorn. And I've got a couple seasonings and things and it makes it a lot healthier than a lot of the snacks out there. I don't buy bags of chips and stuff like that because I just make my own popcorn. It's a lot healthier. It tastes great. And I enjoy it. In fact, I just bought this giant thing of popcorn, 25 pounds. It'll probably last me four years. Well, it may last me a year the way I eat it. But I found something I enjoy. And guess what? I look forward to it. I look forward a couple times a week to having popcorn that I make myself. 
You want to find those things for yourself. What's a quality food thing? Don't get into the fads. Don't get into the craziness. Focus on eating something that's real. Let quality win over quantity. And I promise you, you will find long-term success. All right, guys, closing out the show today, we want to understand that as men, we have to lead the way out of the obesity epidemic in our society. I think we should take charge and be leaders in it. I don't know what age you are, but a lot of men in our society deal with obesity. And the reason it's so high as men get older, I think, is because a lot of men have just quit. But what we have to do is lead ourselves and then we lead others. We have to quit ignoring reality, quit using excuses. If we're fat, the majority of us just have ourselves to blame. We eat too much. We eat the wrong kinds of foods. And we can start doing something about it. We really can. And it can start today. We don't blame the food and try to make the food behave. The diet food industry hasn't fixed our society, has it? We have more diet food today than ever, yet we're fatter than ever. So we don't want to blame the food. What we want to do is start growing in our power of self-control, to become better at controlling ourselves, to get more intentional with our eating, to take control of our eating. And we want to get a new taste for quality food. Look for good food. This will help you build long-term eating success. Find the healthy stuff you like. Experiment. Become better at cooking. And I promise you'll find more long-term success. You see, for most of us, our food is the biggest sources of our fat. And we want to learn to make food our ally and not our enemy. Food is not your enemy. Food is something you get to enjoy. So why not learn how to enjoy it and not hate it, not feel guilty? And the key way to fight and win the obesity battle is to win the battle with the food. You've been listening to the Confident Man Podcast. Click subscribe so you don't miss a future episode. You can connect with David on Facebook and Instagram at David the Maxwell. Find resources to help you as a man at theconfidentman.me. That's theconfidentman.me.